Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Pause. I'm your presenter, Ross Hunt, and I'm joined as always by Niall Davis and Jamie Meppham, who will be giving you their expert analysis this week. Now, let's have a look at what's on today's show. Firstly, we'll be looking at the trailers for Universal's Despicable Me 2 and Disney Pixar's Monsters University. Six, seven, eight, two, 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 six, seven, eight, turn! Niall and Jamie will be casting their eye over the imminent release of Kick-Ass 2 and how this type of genre can effectively justify its use of controversial elements. And finally, we'll be talking about the growing number of films that are using the film soundtrack to draw their audience. First up, we're going to take a look at a snippet from Universal's Despicable Me 2 and Disney Pixar's Monsters University, both due for release this summer. Are you really going to save the world? Guys, right, baby! Cruise back in the game with cool cars, gadgets, How are they working? and weapons! Imagine a university where I can be unique in a family of thousands where I can love to learn and learn what I love. Yeah! Time for a celebration! Woo! We'll be ready! Okay, so Jamie, what are your thoughts on both films? I think they look really good. Uh, I think Monsters Inc. the original, I think it was 2001 it came out, so I was 11 then. So for me it was a huge bit of fun, really, really good film. Uh, to people with me much more recently, um, not not the best animated film I've ever seen, but I'm still excited for both of them. I think more so to people with me, to be honest, because it just looks, the trailer looks a bit funnier than Monsters University. But yeah, overall I think yeah, um, they appeal to me, so kids I'm sure that they'll appeal to much more. I mean it's clear they're box office gems. But with the success of the first one, obviously sequels will be made. Do you feel like the narrative can be tainted because of the push for it to be made into a second movie? Yeah, yeah, but I don't think it's too important. I think with this type of film, uh, the plot and the, is all interchangeable between from one film to another. Um, so I think the importance lies more on the characters and, and the writing of characters and the appeal of those characters. And that's what leads to audiences ultimately wanting more. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's what's good with Disney and Pixar. They are all original material. Yeah, and like we were saying about how Toy Story, for example, is probably one of the only ones that's actually spawned sequels. Uh, and obviously, Toy, you know, Toy Story three. That between that and Toy Story one, there was a huge gap, and public demand was the, what got it made. And obviously, up until this year, we've now got Monsters University. I believe there's a Finding Nemo film that's going to be made. It's only really now, with the exception of probably Toy Story and I think Cars. So yeah, I think Disney, they, they make sure that they, they, they get a, a story that's going to appeal to kids and particularly adults as well. They're not so interested in making sequels, but obviously if they're popular enough and their appeal is enough, then they're going to make another one. So, yeah. Well, Despicable Me 2 is out on 28th of June and you can catch Monsters University from the 12th of July, so check them out. Kick-Ass isn't a costume. It's who you really are. My daddy made me promise I'd never stop defending this city. I'm prepared for anything. We gotta make this right. My anticipation's killing me. Right, so moving on to a completely different type of sequel. We've just seen a trailer for Kick-Ass 2, directed by Jeff Wadlow. Among other things, this can be labelled as a dark comedy. What do you want me to do? Hit me. You're a 15 year old Oh. So this is mine now, where the slightest joke or controversial topic gets taken way out of context. Today in today's society, do you think the dark comedy still has a place in modern day cinema? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, this is evident in uh, Ben Wheatley's rise to fame uh, from his work in this genre, uh, a field in England we spoke about last week. Um, you know, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright. You know, they've had a lot of success, and The World's End is one of the most anticipated films of the year. Um, I think you know. It's, it's really relevant because it, it can be used as a vehicle to make light of a lot of the harshness of reality in modern day society. Yeah. I mean, so is there an argument, though, that the genre alienates the audience? Yeah, there's definitely an argument for it, but I would say that with any genre, you're always going to run that risk. I think with this genre in particular, there's a, there's a line, and everybody's got a line. I don't know where mine is, but you're, you're always going to run a danger with dark comedy. I mean, Four Lines is a good example. Um, it... it plays on terrorism and makes a joke out of it. 
I personally think it's a really, really funny film, but there's a lot of people that probably would have said it's quite controversial and wouldn't necessarily have been a fan of it. But so that's, if you can run that line, you know, walk that tightrope and get it right, then yeah, you can have a really a, a successful comedy on your hands. But obviously, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. So now we're going to hand over to Noel because he's got a film to recommend for us. What have you got, Noel? Well, in anticipation of the release of Man of Steel, uh, another type of superhero film that I'd recommend is Chronicle. It subverts the superhero genre uh, and some of the stereotypes. You don't know who the hero or villain is, really. Um, you know, it, they they have fun with their powers. They don't just seek to uh, you know help people out. Uh, the film could be perfectly summed up in one scene where they levitate a spider and pulls it apart uh, because the film deconstructs the Spider-Man ideal and you know, it all the power, none of the responsibility so yeah, if you want to watch a, a good superhero film that's something different, watch this So, our final topic, I want to talk about film soundtracks. Obviously, with the recent release of Great Gatsby, where hip-hop artist Jay-Z is heavily involved in it. So, me, I'm a big fan of Jay-Z on his own. But then when put into a 1920s film like Great Gatsby, I, I immediately got taken out of the film. Because to hear that, that modern-day music in a film of that era threw me off, and it kind of made me sort of disengage with the film. So, I mean, do you think this is a problem? Yeah, I agree. I watched the film and I definitely felt disengaged, um, which obviously isn't what any director sets out to do. But yeah, hearing a, hearing a tr track that's out, what, I know, six months to a year ago, uh, when it's set in the 1920s, I didn't necessarily think it complemented it well. There's obviously plenty of examples that have worked in those things, but yeah, I, I wasn't necessarily a fan of it. So do you think that big artists and big bands being involved in films like this is going to continue to happen? Well, I think regardless of how well it's implemented into the film, um, from a marketing point of view, it's it's already been a su success because you know it got a lot of people seeing The Great Gatsby in uh, getting excited for it. Um, so yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll continue to happen. Um, for me personally, I don't think anything beats you know an original score. But but yeah. Yeah, I don't think to to elaborate on that. A, a John Williams, you know, Star Wars, a Hans Zimmer, you know, Inception or The Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah. You can't be anything like that. I think a score that's originally written for a film, I think, hands down, will be um, whether something's you know an original song or you know tracks you know plucked from the ether kind of thing, um, or in this case, you know, Jay Z's assembled a group of artists to re-record yeah. songs for it. I think that beats it hands down. But that's not to take anything away that it is successful. Someone like Quentin Tarantino always uses, you know certain tracks taken from whatever decade he sees fit um, and it works perfectly so it's not to say that it doesn't work but mm. in this case um, although the marketing's worked for Great Gatsby I didn't necessarily think it added anything to the film mm. and of course films like Drive and Place Beyond the Pines yeah. have, yeah. have used, used the music well now whenever I hear uh, Bruce Springsteen dancing in the dark all I see is Ryan Gosling swinging his dog dancing, dancing yeah. around like so you know it, 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 it works as long as it's done well but yeah. for a whole film and no, no. A, a, yeah. a score that's unobtrusive is is really what needs to marry the film yeah. together, and I think that's what's important. Yeah. Well, interesting stuff. Great Gatsby is in cinemas now. So we're near the end of our show now, but before we go, we're going to play a game as ever, and this week's is called Thirteen Going on Thirty Seconds. So the aim of the game is I'm going to give our panel 30 seconds and I'm going to provide them with a character, a genre and a subject matter. Now their job is to pitch me a narrative and whichever one I think's best, they will win. Now the loser will have to do a forfeit and that forfeit will be decided by you. Now get hold of us on our Facebook, YouTube or Twitter pages and tell us that. So, you ready? Not ready but yeah, go on. <laughs> okay, so, character is Hannibal Lecter. Oh no! The genre is a musical, <gasps> and the subject matter it has to involve the internet. Okay, you got thirty seconds to think. Oh mate! <laughs> I told you I was gonna be easy this one. Oh, hang on. The internet, the internet. Minds are ticking. Over. 
<laughs> no, it's very quiet. Okay, so Jamie, you're obviously going first. Yeah, I'm alright. Got ten seconds. To think of what you're gonna say. No pressure, Noel. That that spot is one. Last two weeks. Okay, you ready? Got four seconds. Three, two, one, and off you go. Okay, Hannibal Lecter is an orphan who is adopted by a wealthy family who are wealthy because they invented the internet. Uh, there's a whole load of songs that obviously go on, but Hannibal Lecter um, basically ends up being a Ten seconds. millionaire baby kind of thing, and there's lots of music and dance and stuff. And okay, that's it. Now your pitch. That's awful. Okay, so Hannibal Lecter is now very lonely, uh, so he uses the internet for dating on a dating website. And so, obviously, these dates lead to going out for meals, where hilarity ensues because he doesn't like anything on the menu. He prefers his dates. Uh, and Ten then, seconds. Uh, in this version of Hannibal, he's uh, played by Will Arnett. Who is he played by? Will Arnett. I. Oh, okay. You gotta give it to him just because of that. <laughs> right. I think you won anyway. But still. Content. Both of them were very. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Um, <laughs> We're not good at this game. I right? think with the added time, Niall did do better, so I'm going to award it tonight. Damn it! Yes! Sorry, so Will it's down to you guys to very much. tell us what, Jamie, what forfeit Jamie should do next week. Be gentle. <laughs> Be gentle. That's it for our show, guys. Thanks to me, thanks to these two. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Seriously, be gentle. Now it's time for Ross's forfeit from last week's show. Now, of all the hundreds and thousands of uh, suggestions. suggestions that were made on Twitter, we've decided upon one which was for Ross to do the cinnamon challenge. Unfortunately we have a really 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 small budget on this show so we couldn't afford cinnamon so instead we've gone for curry powder. So now if you'd just like to do the honours. Uh, I would love to. That. Okay I'll hold this water for you Ross. Now it's quite simple Ross, all you need to oh, do oh, is just know. swallow I this. I don't know if that's enough. I think a little bit more. I think, I think a little bit more. Oh, uh, okay. Good luck, Ross. Thanks. Thanks for the lucky viewer who. Uh, Thanks, Twitter. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. <laughs>